So the first thing we need to do is calculate the different occupancy rates. So we're going to do this on the calculator. If you press stat and press enter, these are your list. And in list one, we're going to input the total bat houses for each of the different types of dominant natural vegetation. Now we're going to press over and we're going to put in the number of occupied bat houses for each of these types. So to calculate the occupancy rate, we need to divide everything that's in list 2 by list 1. We can do this all in one big step. Press over and then up so list 3 is highlighted. Down here is your function bar. So what we're going to do is say take list 2, so I'll press second 2, divide that by list 1, second list 1. Now when we press enter we have the occupancy rates for all these different types of dominant natural vegetation. So as we write these down, we can see that they are different. So for part A, we'll answer yes. All the occupancy rates were different. We had rates as low as 0.294 for wetland and as high as 0.611 for overgrown field shrub. But are these differences in occupancy rates significant enough for us to say there's a true difference? That's what part B is all about. We're going to use the four-step solving process. For the state step, we'll say we wish to test the following hypotheses at the alpha equals 0.05 level. Now, I chose 0.05 because a significance level wasn't given in the problem, and that's the value we should use by default. Our null hypothesis is going to be there's no difference in bat occupancy rates. So if we go back to our list and we look at the total number of bat houses and the total number of bat houses that were occupied, we can get the average occupancy rate. So here's how we're going to do that. I'm going to press the stat button and go to calculate. And I'm going to calculate one var statistics for list two. Now this is the number I'm interested in, 364. In the stem of the problem, they said there was a total of 688 bat houses. So if there is no difference in the bat occupancy rates, then the true occupancy rate for each of these dominant natural vegetations is going to equal this average, 0.558. Our alternative hypothesis is there is a difference in bat occupancy rates. That is, at least one of the proportions for dominant natural vegetation is not equal to the others. So the status quo, the current model, is that all these proportions equal each other. They all equal about 0.558. We're interested in if our sample data gives us evidence that it doesn't fit that model. So if conditions are met, we'll use a chi-square goodness of fit test. So for the random condition, we're told to assume this is a random sample. So that's met. Next, we need to make sure our sample is large enough. So we'll check the large sample size condition. So our sample size was 688, so we need to calculate our expected cell counts. If we go back to the calculator and we press the stat button again and then press enter, we're back to our list. So if the null hypothesis is true, we'd expect the occupancy rates to all be the same, approximately 0.558. So let's figure out how many houses we'd expect to be occupied for each of the dominant natural vegetations. In list 1 is the total number of houses for each of these dominant natural vegetations. So I'm going to go over to list 4 and push up. This is our, our function bar. And what we're going to do is we're going to take list 1, so I'll press second 1, and we're going to multiply it by the occupancy rate we found, which was 364 divided by 688, the average occupancy rate. So here are our expected occupancy rates for each of these dominant natural vegetations. So let's write those down. The good news is all are greater than 5, so our sample is large enough. For the independent condition, since we're sampling without replacement, we need to check the 10% condition. So as long as we assume there's at least 6,880 bat houses, the 10% condition is met. Now we're ready for the do step. To calculate our test statistic, chi-square, we need to take the sum of the observed minus expected squared divided by expected. Now we already have both the observed and expected stored in our calculator. So the observed is list 2, and what we expected was in list 4. So to use this formula, we're going to press up 
to highlight list five, and we're going to do open parenthesis, list two, our observed, minus list four, our expected. We're going to square that quantity and divide it by list four, our expected. All right. These are our contributing factors, and their sum is going to be the chi-square test statistic. So let's find the sum of list five by pressing stat, calculate, one var stats for list five, so second list five. And there's our sum, and also our chi-square test statistic. Now we need to calculate a p-value, but first let's draw a chi-square distribution with four degrees freedom which is a heavily skewed right distribution. Now we know this has four degrees freedom because we had five different types of dominant natural vegetation and we just subtract one from the number of categories. So that's where the four is coming from. Now the left side of the distribution here is zero and where this 8.27 is, I'm not quite sure. I'm not very familiar with the chi-square distribution for four degrees freedom, but here's what we can do. On the calculator, press second, then vars, and scroll down to chi-square CDF, option eight on this particular calculator. Now it says, what's your lower bound? Well, that's gonna be our chi-square test statistic. So I'm gonna put 8.27. Our upper bound's just gonna be a really large number. And for degrees freedom, we'll put four. We'll paste that and press enter again. And it says our p-value is approximately 0.0822. So now on the curve, if I try to estimate where about 8% of the area on the right would be, I'd go with about here. So I'm gonna write the chi-square test statistic here, and this is gonna be my p-value. Now before we go to the conclude step, let me show you a quicker way to do this. If you press the stat button, and let's look at our list again. Remember, we have our observed count stored in list two and our expected count stored in list four. So if you press stat and you go over to test, down near the bottom, option D on this calculator is the chi-square goodness of fit test. And it says, where are your observed counts? So I'm gonna tell it list two. Where are our expected counts? I'm gonna tell it list four. And for degrees freedom, I'll put four. And I'm gonna highlight draw and press enter. So actually our drawing was pretty accurate. At the bottom there, you can see the chi-square test statistic as well as the p-value. Now let's press stat again and run the test again, but this time choose calculate instead of draw. So here's our chi-square test statistic and our p-value, but the neat thing about this is it gives us our contributing factors, which we already have stored in list five, but this is a neat option on the calculator. So let's write down those contributing factors. So our five contributing factors represent the five dominant natural vegetations. For our conclusion, we're gonna say with a p-value of about 0 0.082, which is greater than alpha 0 0.05, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. There is insufficient evidence to support the claim that there is a difference in bat occupancy rates. Now, if we look at our contributing factors, other than wetland and desert, these are all pretty small numbers, which means for forest, grassland, and overgrown field and shrub, the occupancy rates were pretty much what we expected. Now, for wetland and desert, uh, the occupancy rates were a little bit different than we expected. But overall, all of this evidence wasn't enough for us to conclude there is a difference in bat occupancy rates. If you like this video and want to learn more about chi-square test, check out this playlist. It covers all the typical chi-square test and helps you distinguish which one you should use.